confidence intervals are when you take information from a sample and use it to make an estimate about the population. Now, there are a lot of formulas involved with doing that, but don't worry because today I'm gonna to show you how to plug it in and do it on the TI Inspire. So stick with me as we walk through all the steps to figure this out together. Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Daniel Perney and this is Probability and Statistics. Like I said, today we're going to walk through all the steps on plugging in a confidence interval into the TI Inspire. Now, you may be wondering if I'm going to go through every single one. I've actually made separate videos for all the different ones since your TI Inspire can handle six different sets of confidence intervals. Today we're going to be talking about the confidence interval for the population mean when the population standard deviation is unknown. So that means you'll be using the sample standard deviation for this one. So with that said, let's just go ahead and dive right in. All right, so for today, we're going to be looking at the question right here that says, in a random sample of 60 refrigerators, the mean repair cost was $150 and the standard deviation is $15.50. Construct a 99% confidence interval for the population mean repair cost. Now, we know that this is the type of situation for the population mean with the sample standard deviation because it does not say the population standard deviation. So when we go ahead and jump into our calculator for this, we're starting off at the home screen and we're going to click on our calculator one right here. Once we are in the calculator, we wanna to go to the menu button. We wanna to go to the statistics tab we want to go down to confidence intervals. And from there, we're going to click on two, the T interval. So you use the T interval when you have the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation. From here, we're going to switch the word data over to stats because data means we had the raw data. And in this situation, we actually have the statistics that were given to us in this question. So I go ahead and hit OK, and it's going to ask us for X bar, S, X, N, and the C level. Now, looking back at our actual question here, let's just go ahead and walk through each one of these. So X bar is the sample mean. And in this case, it says that the mean of the sample was $150. So we're going to go ahead and put in $150. Then it says that we are looking for the sample standard deviation. That's what SX stands for. And in this case, that's going to be the 1550. And last on this one that's not filled in yet is the N, which is your sample size. And in this case, there were 60 there, 60 refrigerators. And then finally, although this one is set in as a natural 0.95, in this case, we're actually constructing a 99% confidence interval which means I'm going to delete the 9.5 and turn that into 0.99. Whatever your percent of confidence is, you need to put it in as a decimal for this to be able to do it correctly. Then you just go ahead and hit OK, and you're actually done. Because what it does is it breaks down all the stuff here. We plugged in the X bar, but it's going to give us all of the stuff you need for a confidence interval. Now our confidence interval itself goes from the C lower to the C upper. So that means our final answer here for the confidence interval itself is from 144.67 to 155.33 if you round correctly. Now that's answering the question for the mean repair cost for the whole population should be somewhere between those two numbers with a 99% confidence. But it does give us a few other things. If you know anything about using the t-distribution, that come, goes with the degree of freedom, which is the df right there. And the me is your margin of error. So if we start off our confidence interval at the 150, we're going to go to the left and right from there at the 5.33. And that's where these two numbers come from, is adding and subtracting the 5.33 from the 150. So that's how we use the TI Inspire. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. So as mentioned, this is actually only one of six different confidence intervals that the TI Inspire can do. I do have videos on the other two and I'll tell you more about that in just a second. But first, let me remind you, if you found this video helpful in any way, shape or form, please go ahead and hit the like button below so that I know that I'm doing something that's useful. 
for you. Also, if you want to keep getting Robin Stack content or other math content at all, go ahead and hit the follow button and subscribe to my channel so that you can see new videos each and every week. With that said, I'm putting two videos up on the screen right now, and this is going to be the ones that cover your confidence interval when the population standard deviation is known, and there's going to be a video up right now where you're doing confidence interval for the population proportions. So if you want to check out either one of those, go ahead and take a look at those videos. Otherwise, thanks for joining me. Remember, my name is Daniel Caproni, and this has been Probability Institute.